Hi everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to another edition of Show Me For Beginners and today I'm going to do a guide on how to take darks, flats and bias frames. Now as I've described on the last uh, guide is uh, I mentioned about uh, taking darks and flats with your lights. Now this seems really quite daunting all right? and to us you'll be thinking well what are darks? What are flats? What do they do? Why do we need to take them? Now, the biggest question I get asked is that people think that when you're taking images of light, we also know as, or frames of DSOs and all that, um, we always assume that right, you just connect it to the camera on the telescope and then off you go. Yeah, that's great. But believe it or not, no matter what, how expensive the equipment you buy, or the camera you use, or a CCD you use, you're always never going to get the best picture, alright, the best perfect picture. You can spend thousands, you can spend hundreds, and whatever, but you're never guaranteed that you're going to get the best quality pictures. Now a lot of it is due to um, different conditions like light pollution, um, how transparent your dark sky is, um, even weather creates, uh, you know, creates a factor, important factor to how good your images are. Now, the reason why I'm doing this tutorial is that there is not much uh, uh, advice out there, usually in forums they describe what are darks and flats and all that, but for, for the first time beginner, who's starting out um, imaging of astrophotography will probably be happy with just the lights but one thing you notice that your quality doesn't seem to be perfect um, so obviously we, we have to do certain factors where we can be help to make the improve on the picture quality so by doing a few important steps all right, I'm going to show you is how to best take better pictures but also take I mean, and it only takes a few few moments of your time to take these images all right and take these darks and flats they are important all right to use you know you need to use them uh, particularly if you find you get some weird artifacts in the images uh, you find that there's some weird colour pixels on there and it doesn't look right. Alright, so basically what I'm going to go, I'm going to show you over my uh, Skywatcher 8 inch Quattro, which is a fantastic imaging scope. Alright, as you can see here, it is as it stands on the any Q6 mount, I have the CCD, um, which is the QXY9, fitted already. Alright, and just imagine I'm taking images of a diesel for example now you think to yourself right okay i've cut enough light brilliant one important factor is that when you're taking images is make sure you provide you've got the sharpness so make sure your images are well focused as i described in the last guides all right whatever you do all right once you come to a point where you've almost finished your imaging session or you could or your camera session and you finish taking the, the shots. Um, best number one advice before you do, do anything is always, always leave that focus as it is. Do not touch it. Do not loosen the locking screw. All right, leave it tight. Leave the focus and the imaging tray as it's as it is. Now, depending on um, if what camera you're using. Uh, if you're using DSLR, all right, and if it's not modded and it's not cooled down, um, you need to take a lot of these dark frames. Now, dark frames are basically, um, there's, they're like, um, basically the top, basically using the same exposure time as what you're using on your lights. So if you're using, for example, 
if you're using, I'm taking five minute shots of a light frame, alright, the actual image you're taking, I need to take equivalent amount of dark frames of five minutes. Basically, to do that is, is quite simple. What you do is you set your program, your capture program or your software, and you basically set it so you need to take around about, around about 5, maybe 10 to 15 dots, depending on the camera you're using in your CCD. Now a lot of DSLRs is I recommend you doing around about 10 to about 25 dots for the DSLR. And the reason why we take dots is that if you have, uh, I'll, sh I'll show you a picture to describe it better, but the reason why we take darks is that you'll notice that if you're taking light and you look at the images, you'll notice little specks of red, blue, maybe a hint of green, little specks, they look like stars. But when you look closely at the image, they appear to be as if they're not actually part of that um, star system. They look sort of out of place. These, these pixels. Also what you also get is at one corner of an image it appears to be really light where it's like fuzzy and really light on one side and you think to yourself well, why is that? What's happened there? And basically, um, basically that's the noise in the camera. Now obviously the, the electronics in the, the CCD and the camera are built up inside and basically that heat creates an interference and that interference will be affected onto your image basically. I don't want to go too much in depth on it but basically that noise will be in there and it ruins your, your image quite well. You know? So when you're stacking that you've got that interference on the image itself. So what we use is we use dark frames to try and minimize or eliminate as much of this noise within the camera or CCD. Now, the good thing about for the owners who've got a CCD, right, a lot of the CCD cameras are usually pelter cooling systems, like this one. This can go to about minus 50. Some go to about minus 30, and others around about minus 10, below the ambient temperature. But you know, despite how expensive or how, how complex the equipment you use, you're still going to require to take darks, no matter what. Now for this camera, believe it or not, I still have to take around about 5 to 10 darks, alright, which, you know, it's quite an expensive camera, alright, CCD is expensive, but no matter how good your CCD is or DSLR, just take darks, and it only takes, literally, it depends on what exposure time you set up, it takes a couple of, you know, a couple of half an hour, maybe an hour. Now the best thing is, uh, Best to always take dogs if, say like, you're coming to the end of your imaging session. So once you're happy and you're capturing enough light frames, straight away, leave the train set alone, do not touch it. Program your CCD capture software to the exact same exposure, alright. Once you set the 10 frames, the next step is get the dust cap and fit it over the optical mirror or lens and then leave it. Then what you do is you set the CCD exactly where how many frames of the exact same exposure of what you're using to do to capture your light frames. Once you've done that, that is it. You've taken ton, you've taken 10 dark frames or whatever. Now also the SLR you need might need to take a lot more dark frames. Turbo DLS a lot. If it's not modded, they're not cooled, and you get a lot of interference. All right, so you have to take more docks. I'm afraid with DSLR, unless you're one of the lucky ones with modified DSLR to take astrophotography photos. So that's that's basically all you're doing. You, you're covering it up, and you're taking dark frames. That's all you're doing. Same exposure. Leave the focus train alone, and there you go. Set it, set it as there. And when you are um, you're capturing darks, make sure that all your files are labeled as darks and put them 
in a separate folder on your laptop or file system with your DSLR. All right? So you don't get confused between your lights and your dark frames. Now, as I mentioned before, on some nights where you need the end of the session and it starts to become dusk, you know, dusk is coming up, you know, the morning is coming up, the crack of dawn, the light, you know, starting to get brighter, obviously becoming day. Um, be aware that some CCDs, this one, it doesn't suffer as much. Be aware if you're taking dark frames that make sure that no light, particularly in the areas around here, where stray light from that can seep in, even at the back of the primary mirror, believe it or not. So obviously, be aware that if you're taking dark frames, make sure that there's no stray light that will get into somehow into the optical tray or the CCD. So if there is a case, potentially you could try and cover up the CCD. Now on the QHY ATL, yes, light does actually go through uh, the air vents where the stray light can actually get through. So basically cover it up somehow, but don't restrict the fan. All right, don't restrict the fan. So basically cover it up with a, you know, something over, over it. Making sure that this is still tight, all this tight, you know, the, the, the focus plate is tight enough so it's not going to move about. It's very crucial that you do not uh, adjust the focus when you're taking dark frames. Otherwise, what will happen is if the focus train is moved, the darks aren't going to perform as they should. Also, try and cover up the primary mirror if you can. Now, also, I've got a placky bag here. You know, polythene uh, shower cap. Obviously, I would use like a dark uh, blanket or something like that to cover up so that no stray light can get back and go through the primary mirror. So, obviously, try and seal as best as the stray light so you can get in. Alright? The good thing about taking docks is your mount does not have to be uh, tracking that object. Basically, you can take docks, put the, you can basically put the, the mount back to home position and switch it off. You do not need the mount for this job. All right, when you're taking darks, you just switch everything off except for the CCD or the camera and you take the shots straight away. So as, as I mentioned before, remember stray light can ruin darks. Now the reason why you've got to blow, block this stray light because if you're taking darks, if you're stacking images, what will happen is you'll get light bits on the image itself when you get a complete final uh, stacked image and you'll get some weird ghost shapes or something that doesn't look as if it should be there it looks like something's brick pot poured a bit of paint all, all over the image or something like that so you've got to make sure that there's no stray light okay once you've done everything else and you take your dogs that is it and all you've got to do is just stack it as normal. Right. Now, another process is that I mentioned before is flats. Now, the reason why we take flats is because, um, say like for most of us, our optical uh, tray, our mirrors, our lenses, or even the CCD chip itself, not always completely um, dust free, alright. So they're not always completely dust free, alright. So what will happen is if you're stacked an image and you see um, a particular image and you see like dark specks, like some like um, really dark speck, a brown dot, you know, a black dot just appeared on the image, and you think to yourself, what the hell is that? Basically, we call them as dust bunnies. All right, that's what they call dust bunnies. Uh, they could be fragments of hair, they could be fragments of all sorts of dust. All right. Um, top tip is try and keep the optics covered up. All right, when you're not in use, so right? try and reduce the dust. However, um, it's not much much on the um, the reflectors because you're, you're always going to get a dusty mirror on the primary mirror or the secondary. But you've probably more than likely got du more dust on the CCD um, chip itself. So obviously try and clean off or blow off the dust if you can 
on on the if you can. Now, if you take the shot and the image, then you still got a speck of this dust bunnies or fragments that you see in the image. All right. Um, what you can do is put it together, and you're gonna have to take flats. Now, flats are similar to um, uh, taking darks in a way. Um, the thing is, um, you have to do a different kind of process to take flats. Now, to do this is again, you do not have to have your mount tracking. All right, you do not have to have it tracking all the time. So actually, you can leave the mount switched off. Again, making sure that your drive train has not been touched and it's still in the same position as your imaging lights. Um, also, um, you don't have to worry about stray light covering up. All right, don't worry about stray light uh, as such. But what you do have to remember is make sure that your temperature, as I forgot to mention with darks, if you're taking darks or flats, make sure that your CCD is in the correct sort of um, temperature as you were taking lights. So if I'm taking lights of, say, like um, um, M31, for example, and I'm taking sh um, I was taking light and it was round about minus 15 so I basically set the camera to minus 15 and leave it set on that so it's running at minus 15 so you, that's very important when you're taking darks and flats making sure that you've got the camera and the telescope set in a way to uh, for the exactly for the uh, drive frame obviously of the optical frame so one important key factor. Now, to take flats, you have to just uh, you have to do a certain way. Basically, you take the dust cap, cap off. Now, obviously, I, this is just for dogs. Now, on there here, um, you can buy from a lot of good astro a lot of astro uh, astronomy shops or retailers. You get yourself one of these. Basically, this is like a, a flat screen. They call it a flat screen. And basically, what that does is it emits a certain a fluorescent light. You know, it's not too bright. It's the right sort of setting. Now, believe it or not, it is powered off by a battery pack, and it can be powered by a cigarette lighter that can attach to a power tank. Basically, you connect it with this flat screen onto the power tank and switch it on. You then get this screen. Alright? You then get this screen. Basically it's not too bright and basically this gives you a, a, a flat sort of image. Basically when you take your flats they need to be sort of grey colour. Alright, but not dark, sort of greyish in colour. Um, basically, this device can now be placed on top of the uh, telescope. Alright? Now, obviously, if it slides off, don't worry, we can readjust that. But bear in mind, you do not need to uh, have this uh, mount switched on when you're taking flats. So, basically, you lock it off on there. And basically, making sure you put the screen on top. Like that. Then, what you do is, you set the camera. But what you're trying to do is you try to set the, the, the CCD, uh, you're taking the image, you, you're taking literally milliseconds all right, of shots. You're not taking seconds or you're not taking minutes or hours of exposure. 
Basically, you're just taking sort of milliseconds, just enough so that you get some sort of grey screen. Now, these you can buy from a lot of good astronomy retailers, and you can spend around about probably 60, maybe up to about 100 euros maximum. All right, because it's Patrick Pack, and it runs off from there. And basically, when you're taking flats, take between 10 to 20 flats, and that's all you really need. And then what you try to do is try to get sort of like a grey, sort of lightish grey sort of frame you're looking for. Once you're done with that, you then combine them with your darks and then your lights. Okay, so I'm not throwing you off balance, right? So basically, you combine them, stack them together with that. Hopefully, what that will do is it will eliminate all these dust bunnies on your image. Alright, and you don't get these annoying dust specks and whatever you. Alright, that's the reason why we take flats. However, for a lot of guys who were um, thinking, well, yeah, 60, 100 euros for a flat screen. Um, for some sort of, you think you say, well, that's expensive. Believe it or not, there's actually another way to uh, take flats. Same sort of process. All right, you can take flats. Now, if you uh, had a, say, I'm going to move the telescope now. Now obviously, basically what I'm going to do is if you don't have a flat screen, alright, get yourself basically a, a white t-shirt. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, why do we need to use a white t-shirt? Basically, you can use this as a flat screen. Also you point it at some reasonable light, not strong light. What you do is you fold it in half, right? Fold it in half like so, all right? Make sure that the t-shirt is is not uh, is away from you. Know, you're going to get dust and all that, so be careful when you use these sort of things. And basically, you just fit it over like so, over the. Get some kind of elastic band, and you put the elastic band across. Now it can be a bit fiddly. And there you go. That's all you're going to do. Fit it on there and point it somewhere where there's a bit of a bright light. So yeah, see about the light there. Okay. Not too bright. And it works exactly like the screen. Alright, costs not much money. The only problem with using this device is that you can only use this at certain times. Now, I usually do it around that dusk time when it starts to get light. If you stay that long, you can do it straight away. Now, if you don't, you're going to have to use some kind of fluorescent light or something like that to go against all over that. Alright, but again, it works exactly the same sort of procedures. As the, as the actual uh, flat screen itself. All right. And you do it the same again, you set the exposure time to a certain amount, milliseconds, trying to get some, sort of, some kind of greyish sort of um, light grey frame you're looking for. You have to use a preview screen so you get the right sort of setting. Um, and basically, that works exactly the same. All right. A little bit more hassle than the screen. The good thing about the screen is you can actually use that at night. So when you do finish your session, you put that screen back on there, and you can take the um, you can take the uh, flat frames at night straight away. So you're not messing about. That's a good thing about the flat screen. Now, to this year, this method works quite well as well, but you're going to need some kind of visible light but you can't do this during the dark hours I'm afraid. Now obviously uh, I hope this helps a bit. 
Now we're also going to come up to bias frames. Now bias frames are, are very similar to dark frames. Alright, so bias frames are basically pure black frames, right? We know um, the good thing about these frames is you do not need the Pelter cooling system on for this. However, you've got to remain, the, uh, you've got to keep the focus train as set. So the Pelter cooling system doesn't have to be on, and you do not need to put, um, you do not need, you do not touch the, the focus. And to take bias frames is basically you cover the lens cap on or mirror cap. Again. When you take your bias frames, is you set to the minimum uh, exposure you can get, and I mean milliseconds, so it's like the minimum. But when you take a, a, a bias frame, it will be like a dark frame, pure dark frame, no noise, no interference, nothing. All right. Now the reason why we take bias frames is that they also have a, a certain amount of um, patterns within there. Now when you take these sort of shots, what they tend to do is they tend to make, um, say, say like you're um, taking a picture of a DSO and you start the images and the background seems to be really really light. Um, taking bias frames will try and darken the background as best as it can. Now you can, only, you can only take so much of these, so you take around about 10 to 20 of these bias frames. Again, you can do this um, without even having to set it up when you're taking images. You can do it when you come back, when you finish your imaging session or, uh, or your photography session. You take it back and you can do it there and then. Ideally, it only takes around about 3 or 4, set, three or four minutes to do. All right, just to take 10 to 20 bias frames, and what that does is it will help trying to darken the background as best as it can. All right, because if you start stacking images and the background is really light, it does happen. That's probably due to a bit of light pollution in the sky, or the sky is not quite transparent enough. All right, so that's why we take bias frames. Now, obviously, um, I'm going to show you a series of clips. Um, so we can see what are dark frames, all right? What why you know, we see all the different uh, interference, which you'll see why we take dark frames to illuminate these hot pixels, and I'll show you a picture of that. Then I'll show you a, a picture of these dust bunnies, all right? And that's just to demonstrate why we take flat frames, and then I'll show you a picture of why we take bias frames. Now, obviously, I hope this has helped you guys out a bit. All right. Um, obviously, after you've seen the pictures, we're going to move over, and I'm going to show you how to do these settings. All right, so that you know what sort of settings you're sort of looking for when you're taking a dark frame, or when you're taking a flat frame, or or a bias frame. Now. I will say I'm going to go back from there. Right guys, I'm now going to show you uh, the, a demonstration. I'm going to show you a series of images that I've taken a few years. And I'm going to show you um, these effects. I'm going to show you the first one, which is, as I mentioned about, um, is a picture of M27, which is the Dumbbellman Nebula. As I mentioned about noise, you can see um, now this was an unguided image, so the tracking wasn't great. But you can see, if you look closely, you can see these uh, these little red, blue, and green pixels on the screen here. And I notice you see this light light pattern here, where it's light and everything else is dark. Now this is basically noise. Basically, this is your the noise built up on the camera, where 
the heat's built up and it's created this interference and that's why you get these hot pixels these are hot pixels and then this is the camera noise here all right so this is reason why we take dark frames and bias frames to illuminate or minimize as much of this noise and hot pixel very very uh, you can see the difference why why we do these frames all right that, that's the reason why we do them okay I'm gonna click out of that again here's another image this is one of my really really uh, early ones of Andromeda Galaxy again you can clearly see uh, these hot pixels here all right these colored blue and reds just peering up they look like stars but they just seem to be out of place all right um, also the background is too light all right so that's why we use bias frames to try and darken that background obviously it looks so blurred out and out of proportion uh, here is a speck of these dust bunnies all right and uh, that's why we take flat frames is again eliminate or get rid of these horrible uh, dust particles on your CCD or your optical system all right so and it really does affect your images all right this is the worst proportion of a, an example of an image of all three together obviously as time progress it doesn't matter how experienced you are at taking flat frames, dark frames and all that, you always need to do them and believe it or not, no matter how experienced you get through imaging or astrophotography you're always going to keep learning a good incentive is to keep taking dark frames and your flat frames and try and get your bias frames as well now usually if you've got a good CCD camera like the Ryan Shoe G3 for example, you can get away with just taking around about 10 to 15 darks and maybe take some flat frames. You know. So but get into habit of taking these frames because what will happen is if you um, say that for example you take a really good image and you've got loads of good light frames and you only have to do forget one thing. And I'm going to show you a good demonstration of M31. Again, fantastic image there. Really happy with it. And again, don't rush into these things. All right. Um, there's hardly any of the uh, the hot pixels you see. There is one or two, but you can still see them. Oh, see, I just need to take more dark frames. And. Have you noticed right in the far corner here where the, the pointer is, there actually is a dust bunny. And it just shows you that rushing into an image doesn't pay off. So no matter how experienced you become and how good your astrophotography uh, images will be, always get in the habit of doing, always take dark frames, flat frames and bias frames, no matter what. All right, don't cut corners, just do the process. Try and do the, um, the these frames together with the image because you usually the, the, the frames work a lot better than taking dark frames and flat frames from another last imaging session. But try and fit your imaging session together with the image you were using and the kit at the time of that night. So, I say, Really good image, spoiled by one speck of a dust bunny and maybe one or two hot pixels. But, obviously, this is to demonstrate to you guys that you can, you can achieve amazing results from just taking these frames. Right then guys, I'm on my laptop and I'm going to show you how to open up software so you can take dark frames and flat frames.
and bias frames. First off, I'm going to show you how to use the Orion uh, CCD camera software. As we click on over here, open it up. Make sure all your cameras already set up before you select camera control to connect. Click on connect, and then what you're going to do is you're going to set the temperature. Set the temperature. Minus 10, click on set. Then you select on the capture, and along here you need to set your exposure time to 0 0.001 for now. Then click on the type which will be flats. We're taking flats at this point first. Now it just depends on when you're imaging. You can either select bin mode to one times one or two times two, depending on your light frames which you've collected. You then Select on analysis if it's not highlighted on the side. You just click on analysis and you should have this table here. When you're taking flat frames, is make sure you have a file so that you can save all your flat frames in that one file. We're going to do a single capture first. It's basically we're not going to uh, save the actual frame itself we're just going to check the value of the analysis you want the maximum value here on the analysis table between 10,000 to 15,000 to the set value between the maximum to take a flat we just double check see if the uh, camera is cooling down Cameras cooled down. We're going to capture a single frame. And there we have it. We have a flat frame here. Now you can see the value is around about 12,000, which is more than adequate. You can, if you can't get the value as you want it, you just set the exposure rate to any value as long as if it's between 10,000 to 15,000. We do another single frame. And now we go up to 13,739. Okay, that is basically your flat frame. Once you're happy with that setting, you go to camera control. If I go to capture, sorry. And we're going to click on sequence. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to select browse with the directory. And we are going to set our folder. Now to make it a little bit easier we can create our own folder and we're going to call it flats. We'll click on browse again Okay, that is now our directory set to the flats directory folder. Um, you can also change your file name depending on what you're imaging. You can call it any DSO 
M31 for example M31 and call that flat now you want to set the exposure once so you click on the tick box to run and you click the type to flat you set the exposure as you did on your single to 0 0.003 and you had it at one time one binning now that just depends on what um, light frames you captured on what mode you're in now the thing with flat frames is they will only work to the maximum effect if you do between 10 to 20 flat frames uh, bear in mind when you're taking these flat frames make sure you do not touch the focus wheel or the CCD they need to remain in the same position as you were taking the light frames once you're happy you then press run sequence the CCD now will then start to do its capture does not take long takes probably two to three minutes at the most keep the notes of the analysis the maximum is still within the 10,000 and 15,000 value as you notice your light also your flat frames have a sort of greyish colour to them Okay, that has now taken all your 20 flat frames. What you can now do is once you finish with that, you can combine them with your dark frames and your light frames together. As I mentioned before, with flat frames, as well as eliminate uh, these uh, dust fragments on the CCD or on the picture itself where you get the black dots, also known as dust bunnies you call them um, this will also eliminate that and flat frames also will eliminate uh, the effect called vignetting vignetting is an effect where an image where it appears to be bright in the middle of a bright halo as if you're looking down a tube and that basically eliminates that effect as well if you've got vignetting in your images so that's why we take flat frames we're now going to take dark frames to take dark frames basically you do not need the flat frame panel or the t-shirt as I mentioned before that uh, the t-shirt the white t-shirt approach you tail it off and to take dark frames you put the lens cap back on ensuring that you do not touch the focus wheel or the CCD leave it as it is make sure that your temperature is set exactly you was taking light frames and to take dark frames is simple you select on capture you select type and you select dark now thing with dark frames is you need to set your exposure time exactly as you were taking your light frames so for example I'm taking Messier 31 the Andromeda Galaxy and I was taking five minutes exposure times which is around about 300 seconds you set the value to 300 seconds ensure that your camera remained at exactly the same temperature as you were taking light frames 
and you are basically you don't need to do a single capture but you'll need to set a sequence so you select sequence you click on your directory select browse select the folder click on make new folder and call that darks click OK change your file names to M31 darks you then click the tick box to run select the type to dark set the exposure to 300 seconds now we've done the binning at 1 times 1 now this, now this bit here just depends on what CCD you have now the more expensive ones like I have the QHY9 you only need to take around about 5 to 10 darks now for the Ryan Sh Star Shoot uh, G3 camera it doesn't have uh, a powerful pelter cooling fan so you need to take a lot more dogs this also applies to your DSLR cameras which they have no cooling uh, systems at all so you need to take around about 15 maybe 25 dark frames I'm going to select 20 frame 20 dark frames and I'm going to now run the sequence it gives you a warning here of the exposure when you talk taking dark frames uh, the program ensures you to make sure you put the cover on the camera or the telescope which we've already had click on OK and then what it will do it will take five minute exposures of dark frames this will take an hour and 35 minutes to take these frames now just assuming I've already taken all these dark frames I already have them on file so there's no need for me to take this go along with this process so just assuming that we have taken them and you will find them in your file where you've saved them again same process reason why we take dark frames is these frames will eliminate the uh, the hot pixels that will appear in the image basically you'll see a red a green or a blue specks of dots which appear to look like stars but if you look closely at the image they seem to be not part of the picture at all they seem out of place um, this is due to the noise in the camera which is the heat generated within the camera so that's why we take dark frames to eliminate that effect also true with noise is that you also get a light patch across one corner All right, it will also eliminate that effect as well okay last but not least uh, I'm going to show you how to capture bias frames things with bias frames is you do not need to set the CCD to uh, a set cooling so you can actually switch the fan off if you wish okay we switch the cooling off now with bias frames you do not need to set uh, a long exposure for these you set the camera to the lowest value of exposure time as possible 
you then select the type to bias leave the binning mode to 1 times 1 and we click on sequence again go through your directory again Just click on browse click on the folder Orion store select a new folder and call that BIOS you then change your file name to BIOS click on the run box select the type to BIOS and set your exposure to 0 0.001 is the lowest value you can set for this camera. Leave to one times one binning. Now with bias frames you can take between, there's no fixed rate, 10 to 20 frames is more than adequate. These don't take long, they literally take a minute if at the most. Click on run sequence and now the camera will now start to take bias frames. Now with bias frames, make sure that your lens cap is covered and you leave your focus wheel and your CCD in place. Do not touch it. Now it's going to take bias frames. Okay, that's the bias frames taken. Now, have you noticed with bias frames that they are basically a dark, pure dark frame altogether. There should be no noise or anything within that picture. The reason why we take bias frames is, say like, for example, you have an image and the dark background of the stars appears to be very light. Now, you combine... Uh, the bias frames with your lights to try and darken the background story fields that's why we take bias frames now this concludes the uh, the guide through Orion star shoot uh, camera studio I'm now going to proceed over to the easy cap for the QHY CCDs and then I'll show you how to take your flat frames, your dark frames and your bias frames through EasyCab. Ok guys. I'm now going to show you how to use EasyCap using the uh, QHY ATEL camera. Uh, this program will work on all the QHY cameras. And basically, we click on EasyCap. Now, this is a brand new version of EasyCap, which is a version 3.23. Um, there are some slight differences between the old one, but uh, but the principles work exactly the same. First off is obviously when you're imaging with a different camera, make sure your focus wheel is in place. Don't trust the CCD, and uh, as soon as you finish capturing the lights, you click onto camera setup. Set your temperature, now obviously double check on your temperature on the control. So basically, whatever setting you had it, obviously uh, around about minus 25 when I last captured my light frames. Click on auto control and leave it there. Let the, uh, let the fan take its place. Select QHY ATL.
now the CCD now is cooling down to minus 25. Now the QHY ATL will go behind around about minus 30. Click on to your uh, planner. You're going to set your flats and your bias frames and so forth. Uh, again, this is your tick box here that says use. So you click on each box to start a program. Now you can do this in stages where you can do your flats, your darks and your bias frames. However, uh, I was, I'll rather keep it simple, stupid, do it once at a time. So, always do it once per set of frames you do. Obviously this is your binning mode, that depends on what lights you use for your binning. So we'll leave it to one times one. This is your exposure time. Obviously we're taking darks, so we're doing 300, 300 seconds. And we're going to repeat this. And we'll repeat this 10 times. You can either type it in or use the quick release thing. You select your folder, which uh, you can put into your darks. So you select your darks and you have your set folder here. Now uh, you select your file name. At this box here, <clears throat> it's best to put down uh, the DSO name and uh, type in darks. You click this box at the bottom that says capture dark frames. It will again give you a warning. which is fair enough and then what you do is you will cover up the uh, the dust cap of the, the lens system or mirror system and then what you do is once you check that your camera is cooled down Right, so just make sure that your camera is cooled down, which is looking all right. This is very important. Make sure it runs as stated. So you just wait till it gets to near enough minus 25 degrees of the light frames you're taking. That it needs to be near enough the same. Very important. But anyway, just assuming that. Um, it's cooled down. We'll tick on this box on the planner, and then what we're going to do is we click on the start button, and now this QHY ATL is now going to take the dark frames. Okay, I'm going to force stop. Because assuming now we've completed our dark frames, you see this panel here that says on capture. All right, it also beep it yeah to say it's done. All right, we've now captured our dark frames. Now, what you're going to do is you then go to your planner. Still have the same options. And now we're going to set up our um, our flat frames. So before we do that, we minimize that, and we go to preview. What we're going to do is we're going to take a flat frame now. Leave your gain on your and your settings as normal. All right, you can either minimize them, all right, go take them down, whatever. But leaves usually the same setting as you were on your light frames. What you're going to do is you're going to create a live frame, which is basically you're going to take a trial shot 
of the of the um, actual uh, image itself. Before we do that, we need to click on noise analysis. Once the noise analysis is uh, selected, we remove the dust cap, put on our flat panel. Right, so we've got our flat panel or your t shirt method, whatever you choose. And basically, what you're going to do is you're going to click on live and you're going to take a series of. Now, uh, that looks a bit grey. So, what we're going to do is go to capture. Now, because we selected noise analysis, you get these uh, these numbers here, the RMS value here. Basically, you want to get that RMS value as low as you can get it, you know. And to do that is um, what you do is select this button, seconds button, to milliseconds, and you lower it down as much as you can. And then you do a capture. Press on capture. You then get a, a flat frame. Now, obviously here is what you're looking for. Um, you can either up the gain or lower the, uh, lower the meters per second. Click, select on capture. Now you see the RMS value is 38. You need to go round about 23,000 to 21,000. So you lower the meets per second. Capture again. Perfect. We've now got a a, a, we have now got a flat frame with the set values of 21 to 24, 23, we, near as damn it. But basically that's our flat frame. You must remember what setting you had, 50 gain and you had 47 meters per second. You go over to planner. Uh, you will select the exposure time. You select this exposure time. Now, obviously, it is set at meters per second. So you type in 0 0.047. With flat frames, you can do 10 to 20 flat frames. Click on this box here, select and type in flats. You need to change your directory folder, so you click on that button there, you click on your folder, click OK. Now untick the captured dark frame box. And then what we're going to do is now we're going to take uh, the flat frames. Click on start. Now what that's doing now is now taking our flat frames. Remember the RMS value of 21 or 24. You need, you need to get that setting in between those settings to get, keep hold of your flat frames. Remember the gain you used and so forth. And that's basically taking our flat frames. Right, now assuming that we're, we've taken all our flat frames, I'm going to click on four stop because I'm just assuming that I've collected all my frames. So I've collected all my flat frames. 
Now what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, create bias frames. So I take the panel, I take the flat panel off. I will place the dust cap. Put the dust cap back on, and we're going to take bias frames. To do this, we click on preview. We minimize the planner by clicking there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take another live shot. At this point, with bias frames, you do not need to have your temperature control on. So you can press tech off, which will then switch off the cooling. There's no requirement for the cooling. We can cancel that. And now we're going to take bias frames, a, a trial bias frame. Now, I would say it is set. Make sure when you take bias frames, it is set at the minimum exposure of one meter per second, or one millisecond. You click on live, and it gives you a really dark frame. I'm happy with that, there's hardly no noise, no uh, stuff on there, alright, it's a pure dark frame. Unclick live button, you then go to your capture, there's no requirement for uh, noise analysis, because we don't want that, so we uncheck that box. We click on planner, we pop up the planner up, we select the box to 0 0.001, which gives us one millisecond. We take that box there, we repeat it 20 times, we select our directory folder. Now, obviously, I haven't set my folder, but I can put mine into darks but we can create a bias folder if you want so what we do is we'll put in a folder click OK we change the uh, the file name to bias frames no need to take in any boxes and then what you do is you press start Now what it's doing now, it is now collecting the, the bias frames. Okay, I'm going to assume, I'm going to force stop, Just, I'm assuming that I've collected all my dark bias frames. And I've collected my bias frames. So this concludes um, how to take your, your dark, your flats and your bias frames using the two different softwares, programs for each of the different CCDs. So guys, now, uh, now you've seen uh, how, how you do your settings, um, I hope that helps you clarify what are dark frames, what are flat frames and what are bias frames. I hope that's dispelled a lot of the uh, unanswered questions. Um, like I say, it is a lot to learn. Um, but the thing is, um, I know it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, but believe me, by doing this sort of process, doing these uh, certain frames, you're going to get the best sort of possible images. All right? Now, obviously, this. As I described before, even if you've got the most complicated equipment and most expensive equipment that you use, you're still going to have to take certain frames. All right? You're never ever going to get a perfect picture. But however, when you're doing these sort of frames, you're getting the best sort of uh, best sort of images you can get 
that can be achievable all right as possible so i hope this has helped you guys a lot all right please feel free to answer any questions on the forum all right or on facebook um i hope this is gives you a lot of uh, good information and thanks again for watching and i hope to see some of your great images now obviously i've gone through a lot through this tutorial but please feel free answer any questions show your great images if you've got any problems with your images please highlight that, highlight that out as well because that will also help us so obviously please feel free to answer questions and uh, thanks again hope you have clear skies and uh, goodbye